Hi there, this is David Williams to talk to you today about inductors in AC circuits. And what we're going to look at is what is the relationship between the voltage across an inductor and the current through an inductor in an AC circuit. We're going to focus, when we're talking about AC circuits, we're going to focus on sinusoidal signals, uh, sinusoidal AC signals. Now, you'll recall, hopefully, that the relationship between voltage and current in an inductor, just in, in general, so look at the voltage across the inductor is a, a changing a changing variable and that's going to be equal to the inductance of the inductor times the rate of change of the current through the inductor over time. And if we use and an AC signal, so we've got uh, our IL of T is equal to, so the current, the current through the inductor is a sinusoidal signal that's got some amount of peak current, it's sinusoidal, and it's got some frequency. Then if we plug this number into the equation here, we've got the voltage across the inductor is going to be equal to the rate of, chi rate of change of that particular this particular sinusoidal equation for current. And using some, some basic calculus, we can actually you know, figure, what, figure out what this is. And so IP is going to be a constant. And when we do the derivative of, of sine of 2 pi ft with respect to time, we're going to bring the 2 pi f out front. So L times IP times 2 pi f times the derivative of a sine then is a cosine. So still a sinusoidal wave just with a different offset, a different phase shift. So here's what VL of T is. So the, the voltage, if our current is a sine wave, our, our voltage is going to be a cosine wave. And let's uh, combine some stuff here. If you if you recognize the form of the equation here, if we combine all of this together, that is our peak voltage. So you can see that the peak voltage depends on the inductance of the inductor. It depends on how much current's going through the inductor, and it depends on the frequency. Or I guess the, I should say the peak current that's going through the inductor, and it depends on the frequency that 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 the current is changing. So from, from these two equations, there's two, two pieces of information that we can derive from it. The first one is the relationship between the peak voltage and the peak current. And the second relationship is, is the relationship between the phases of the voltage and the phase, or the phase of the voltage and the phase of the current. So the first thing that we'll look at is, is the relationship between the peak voltage and the peak current. So I combined all of this stuff into, into peak current, so we can say that the peak current is equal to I'm just going to rearrange that a little bit. IP times 2 pi F L. So I just move some, move the, move some of these terms in the equation around a little bit. And from this, we can see the ratio of the peak voltage to the peak current is equal to 2 pi F times L. And this is, this, is, so this is for an AC signal, of course, a, a sinusoidal AC signal. If you remember in, in DC, if we have a DC case, the voltage over the, resist, uh, voltage over the current is the resistance from, from Ohm's law. So this is sort of like a, an Ohm's law for AC, for AC circuits, or at least, at least for, the, for the magnitude, comparing the magnitude of the, of the voltage and, and the current. So as, as the frequency changes, so does the relationship between voltage and current, and as the inductance changes, so does the relationship between voltage and current. And in DC, we call that the resistance. In, in AC, we call this the reactance. This is the reactance, and in this case, since it's an inductor, this is the inductive reactance. And we give inductive reactance, or given the units X, and we go sub L to indicate in, that it's inductive. So the inductive reactance x, x sub L is equal to 2 pi F L. So just to give, give you an example of how, or to show you how, how this inductive reactance changes with, with frequency, even for the, for the same inductor. So let's say we have got an inductor here. 
that's got uh, an inductance of one Henry, and we've got a signal a, uh, a signal applied to it, a voltage applied across it, generating a current through it. And so, if the if we've got the frequency and the inductive reactance, we if we have a frequency of of one thousand hertz. We plug a thousand hertz into this equation and we end up with six thousand two hundred and eighty three and the units for inductive reactants are ohms, same as same as for resistance. Frequency of a thousand hertz across this one a one hertz one Henry inductor we get six thousand two hundred and eighty three ohms. Now if we if we boost this frequency way up to one gigahertz, so ten to the ninth hertz, we get an inductive reactance of six point two eight three times 10 to the ninth ohms or 6.283 giga ohms so you increase the frequency and your inductive reactance is going to go way up so inductors don't like changing changing they don't, they don't like high frequencies they're going to really really present an opposition to high frequencies now if we if we decrease this hit this frequency way down to one hertz so we're getting really close to DC now we're going to have an inductive reactance of 6.283 ohms and as you get closer and closer to DC, once you have DC, if you plug in, so DC of course is, is zero hertz, you plug in zero to this equation and you get an inductive reactance of zero, which is really the way that inductors behave in DC circuits. Well, you know, once you've reached that steady state, the inductor acts like a short. Now what about that relationship between the phases of the voltage and current? I've, I've rewritten the equations here, the, the current is a sinusoidal wave or sine function and the voltage is a, is a cosine function. Now what's, what's the phase difference between a, a sine function and a cosine function? Well, it's, it's a 90 degree phase shift and a, and a cosine is going to lead a sine wave by, by 90 degrees. So if, if we were to rewrite this in terms of a, of a sine, this is going to be VP sine of 2 pi FT plus some amount of phase shift where that phase shift, if we were to look at that as in, uh, in uh, degrees, it's going to be 90 degrees, or if we're looking at it in radians, it's pi over 2 radians. So voltage, in this case, is leading current by 90 degrees, and we can see that in a, in a graph here. So here's a graph of, of voltage, which we've given with E, we could call it V there as, as well. So voltage and current, and you can see that voltage is reaching the peak before the current reaches its peak, so its voltage here is leading, and if we call this time zero, then this is a, a cosine, and this is a sine wave. And the, the difference, the phase difference between the peak of the cosine wave over here and the peak of the sine wave over there is 90 degrees, or, you know, one quarter of a full cycle, or pi over two, which, you know, also, also one quarter of a, of a full cycle. So these two pieces of information, the, the relationship between the peak voltages and peak currents and the phase differences between voltage and current, we can combine these two things together and, and um, into a new representation of the relationship between voltage and current called the impedance, and the, we call this the inductive impedance. Inductive impedance. So impedance is like, is like resistance, but, but it's only uh, for, for AC signals. So inductive impedance, and we give it the signal or the the symbol ZL, and these are this is a, this is a vector because we're going to include both a magnitude and a direction, and so the magnitude that we we have is is this inductive reactance that we've determined, and the direction we're going to do this in polar coordinates. So I'm going to use the angle symbol here. So the the magnitude's XL and the direction is 90 degrees. And this idea for direction comes from the fact that that we're dealing since we're dealing with sine waves we can we can look at these as as phasers. So if here's a two-dimensional plane, a phaser is this this vector that's that's rotating and and, and basically creating this creating a sinusoidal wave. And so um, a sine a sine function with no phase shift would be with a zero degree direction, whereas a cosine wave with with a ninety degree phase shift would be shifted ninety degrees from from the sine wave. So here's where the ninety degrees comes from. So this is a plus. This angle there is plus ninety degrees from from a sinusoid from a sine wave. 
and so we can use this notation of magnitude and uh, magnitude and direction not only for the inductive impedance but also for the voltages and and the currents voltage is going to have a magnitude and that magnitude is the, the peak voltage or maybe the rms voltage and it's going to have a direction you know how much of a phase shift does it have from from a, a zero degree sine zero degree sine wave so let's look at a, a couple of examples to give you more of an indication of of how this this vector notation can can be used when we're dealing with with sinusoidal signals. So let's say that we've got uh, a signal with a voltage of five volts. So let's draw out the circuit here. So we've got a, a five volt signal here, a frequency of two kilohertz, and we're going to define this voltage as having uh, zero phase shift. So this is this is our sine wave, and it's applied to an inductor over here and this inductor is a 50 millihenry inductor so we can we can say that our voltage voltage across the inductor we can give it a peak voltage so that's 5 volts and a phase angle it's 0 degrees and what we want to figure out here is the current and we want to figure out the peak current and the, the phase shift of the current um, so we're going to be applying the Ohm's law as they as they correspond to AC signals. So we need to figure out what the inductive impedance is. So I guess maybe I should draw some arrows on here to indicate that these are vectors. You know, you know things with a they're, they're, I mean, they're phasers, so things with a magnitude and a direction where that direction is talking about how much phase shift these things actually have. So the the impedance is going to be equal to the inductive reactance so we can figure out what the inductive reactance is is 2 pi times the frequency which is 2000 times the the inductance of the inductor so that's 0 0.05 henrys and that works out to to be um, 628.3 ohms so the inductive impedance is has 628.3 ohms of magnitude and its direction, always for inductors, the direction is giving a phase shift of 90 degrees for the voltage uh, with respect to the current. So our, our Ohm's law for inductors, voltage over current is equal to the impedance. Or, you know, re rearrange this equation in, every, in any way that you want. So if we want to figure out what the current is through this inductor, we just rearrange the equation and we get VL over ZL plug in some numbers here the the voltage across the inductor is 5 volts with an angle of 0 degrees the impedance is 628.3 ohms with an angle of 90 degrees and this all works out to well the way that we do well, the way that we do this is we divide divide the magnitudes and when we're doing division of these of these polar coordinates, we're going to subtract the the phase angles. So five over six hundred twenty eight point three is going to give me seven point nine five milliamps. This will be the the peak the peak current, and it has a phase angle of minus ninety degrees. So this means the current is lagging the voltage by ninety degrees. Look at the the minus ninety degrees here and the zero degrees here for the voltage. Current is lagging voltage by ninety degrees. Now here's here's a new system that I've just drawn. I'll move this time out of the way there. We don't need to see it. So I'm, I've got a new a new system here that I've just drawn. In this case, we want to figure out what the voltage is with respect to the to the current. So we're going to see that the phase shift of voltage with respect to current, figure out the peak the peak voltage and everything. So the the current in in vector form is going to be one amp, and this this time we can define the current as being the the signal with a zero degree phase shift. So this is a sine wave with no phase shift. The for this one, we need to also figure out the inductive reactance. And so XL is going to be two pi times a frequency, which is a million times hundred microfarads, which work, which actually also works out to six hundred and twenty-eight point three ohms. So the inductive impedance is 628.3 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees so it gives a phase shift a voltage of plus 9 for, to the voltage of plus 90 degrees and now we want to figure out what the voltage is the voltage is is um, ohm's law for ac circuits impedance 
times current ZL times IL so this will be 628.3 with a phase angle of 90 degrees times 1 with a phase angle of 0 degrees so it works out to 628.3 volts with a phase angle of 90 degrees so the voltage is leading the current by 90 degrees and so you see I mean, the phase difference between voltage and current is voltage is always going to be 90 degrees before the voltage will be 90 degrees before the current in, the, in this case we've got current defined at 0 degrees but in the previous example we had voltage divided at, uh, voltage defined as 0 degrees it really doesn't matter which way you define things it, the, it's the, the relative phase shifts that matter so I hope you learned something about inductors and AC circuits and the relationship between voltage and current in inductors and I'll see you in the next video